Hi, this video is about upgrading your coolant expansion tank to a more modern system or an electronic level detector. Because after all, what's the most important thing about looking after your engine? That is making sure you never run out of coolant and your engine overheats and ruins your head gasket and so on. I decided to go for a slightly more advanced water level sensing uh, method. Uh, got this second hand expansion bottle from eBay, it's from uh, VW Tiguran. Has a water level sensing connection already on it. Actually inside the tank it's just two wires that are poking the water. And to that you have to attach some electronic circuit. There are little modules that fit in production cars. The advantage of electronic water level sensing is that it doesn't rock around so much like a float switch does, which uh, bobs up and down with the water level, swings from one side of the car to the other as you're going around the corner and so on. So you need to do a bit of electronic filtering on it. Hopefully the, uh, the two wire sensor will be a bit more reliable. There's the old expansion tank removed, comes off quite easily, just one clip at the bottom there and two pipes, one at the top, one at the bottom. The replacement tank, as I say from Tiggy it's the same um, pipe size at the bottom, uh, looks fairly compatible with the top hose I've got, got on. All we've got to do is relocate the connection to this hose because it's around the other side compared to the other one um, and I think we can do that because part of it is a T-junction, which is uh, going off to the top of the engine there, this pipe here. That, I think, with a bit of moving out, I'll be able to go there quite easily. What I'm gonna do is, to mount it, I'm gonna push it in the corner there. Uh, it's got these clips here, which obviously had some sort of pipe going through it. Well, I can use those to cable tie onto this bonnet switch maybe one onto the uh, brake reservoir over there, which is quite secure. And the other pipe then connects to that T-junction, comes I think from the radiator. So if we just move that to the other side of the bottle, that will then join up with our T-junction and uh, that should just about reach. So very easy to swap it over. The advantage of this tank is it's got this level sensing connection. Here's an electronic circuit we've got to do next. Uh, this is the inside of the tank, you can see there it's got two metal prongs that go down into the water, go quite low. So uh, it has to virtually run out of water to trigger the alarm. And put it at that sort of uh, angle and we can see the min and max marks as well. And there's a new tank installed in place, just for the few cable ties, uh, but it's secure enough in its uh, location and a tie around this pipe as well. So next on to the electronics for it. So this is the module you can pick up from eBay or Amazon very cheaply, only five pounds. So it's not really worth making your own. And this is how you'd uh, wire it up. I'll come back to you later. So despite asking the supplier several times for a specification or wiring diagram of how to use these things, I never got anything back. Couldn't find anything on the internet. It seemed to be a devil of a job. So I had to take it apart and inside, there's a little circuit board like this and it's orientated that way around on the unit. Uh, it's a bit of a job to get it out but uh, save you the effort I've done it and worked out how it's wired up. Uh, along the way I blew up one of the transistors by wiring it incorrectly but I changed that and uh, it now functions. So the red wire here is the 12 volt positive, black wire on the right is the ground zero volt connection, the grey wire is the output and it's what's called uh, an open collector output. Don't worry about the details. Basically what that means is, if you get a little LED like this, connect one side to your 12 volts. These LEDs, uh, if you get 12 volt LEDs, they have a little resistor in the leg of the wire. And so the negative side of the LED, you connect onto the gray wire, which goes to that metal pin. And the two pins, that go into the water, those ones, which on the circuit board go through those holes there. And instead I've just wired up this uh, blue and red wire. And we'll see in a minute if I turn on the power supply and with the output connected to our LED and it powered up to 12 volts, you can see our LED is on at the moment because the wires are just in free air, which is what we like to see. And to mimic water being in the bottle, if I flip my two fingers, 
fingers on, you see it quickly goes out. So if the water's sloshing around, as long as you've got some water, the light will stay out. But the water has to disappear for a little length of time, a few seconds for the light to come on. So it's got some time filtering on there, which is good to stop it giving false readings. So there you can see the circuit's working. All we've got to do now is wire it up to the car, have it switched by the ignition, and we should have a nice little warning light, which will update your car to be more like a modern car. This is the remains of the case. So I'll pop that around the circuit board and put some silicon seal all over the top of the board to waterproof it as well, which is uh, similar to how it is made. So just to show you how you'd wire up that module, here is a simple wiring diagram. So the two wires of the sensor go onto the water bottle. You wire it with 12 volts and your ground connection and the output goes onto that LED. Try and route that inside the car somewhere so it's visible. Right, so that's my little module wired in onto the tank. Module itself, I've just uh, insulated in silicon and insulating tape, put around the back. The wires to go into the cabin for power and the LED light. I've taken quite a few wires through this drain grommet, which is at the bottom of this drainage channel. If you take this plastic off, there's a grommet on the bulkhead that goes into an area just behind the digital clock. Behind here, and I've taken the wire, put the LED onto my instrument cluster, that little light there. So we'll just double check whether it works or not. With the ignition on, the LED is off. And to mimic no water, we can just pop off the connection to the tank. And hopefully we should see the light on. Which we do indeed. So that's our low water warning light for our coolant level. Thanks for watching and good luck with yours.